<laughs> How are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing well. Um, I just got back from, where was I? I guess I went to the UK. I was ah. in Birmingham near London um, for a convention, my first ever Star Girl convention. And then oh. I went on vacation in Dublin, Ireland for a couple of days. So I just got back from that. Oh, that's wonderful. You, you're literally uh, going around my neck of the woods. My, my family's from the Midlands, so that's not too far away from Birmingham. Was okay. that for, was was that for Comic Con or, or an actual Star Girl convention? No, it was for a Star Fury convention. Oh, so it was cool. a bunch of like DC Universe people, but it was it was really fun. It was my first time getting to do it because Star Girl premiered during a pandemic, so yes. um, it's fun finally getting to do that. Oh, that's wonderful news. Um, well, talking of Stargirl, I'm pretty sure a load of other journalists have asked you this question uh, oh. time and time again. But could you <laughs> could you go over how this whole um, this whole Stargirl journey started for you? What was the casting process like? Okay, I was like, do you want me to give you like a description of how? No, <laughs> no like what? Um, I got the audition for it, and it was. I was at such an interesting point in my career um, coming off of like a children's show doing the mm. whole child actor situation. Um, I had just been up for a really huge project between me and one other girl that like absolutely broke my heart where I was like, everything was put into question. I was like, should I just go and get a degree in college? Like, should I just give up acting? And within a week of that all happening, I got the audition for Star Girl. But at this point I was like definitely protecting my heart. And the original audition was so vague. I think I am the only character whose audition was actually Courtney slash Stargirl. All the other ones were like fake names, fake characters. Um, but it was a really easy audition process compared to like some of the other ones I've been through. I think Jeff Johns, our showrunner and creator of Stargirl, he had a very particular image and just energy that he wanted from this character and if you walked in the room and like didn't have that I don't like he it it wasn't really up to question I don't know what it was but he just said I walked in the room and like he knew from yeah. that on like I was going to be his star girl and I'm the rest of history I mean that must have been a massive thrill I did read that Jeff Johns did say that about you said the minute you walked in they they kind of knew already that you were their star girl you were their Courtney Whitmore and um, she is easily one of the most unique um, characters in the DC Comics universe. I literally can't think of any superhero that's that's like her. Um, but if you were to say, like, what what is the thing that makes her unique for you? What would that be? I would say probably for me, like, in my perspective, the thing that actually makes her a superhero is not a particular, like, you know ultra human power mm. but it's like her heart the light that shines through her is what I believe connected her with the cosmic staff and you know made her star girl um and I find that to be very unique and interesting so many people who who don't know who star girls their first question is like well what's her powers and I'm like yeah well her heart and they're like well that's <laughs> weird I'm like no it's special it's like you know the root of superheroism I mean, like it's it really is. It's like when you when I remember when it first came, the the show first came out. I I had little knowledge of Stargirl. I'm going to be completely honest with you, uh, of the comics. Same. Um, but when when the when we were first we were kind of first introduced to her, uh, I believe in Legends of Tomorrow, but it wasn't okay. you that you was playing all the her. More shows, you know it. Yes. All. Okay. Yeah. Um, but then, so what, what was it like? Because you were introduced in such a way that it must have been kind of mad. You were literally thrown in at the deep, at the, in the deep end in the uh, Crisis on Infinite Earths um, crossover. So yeah. what, what was it like for you having to act alongside all these, these massive stars in the, uh, in the DC Comics world? Well, that's like going to the convention. I was next mm. to, you know, all these, there was, I think, five DC, DC Legends actors there. And I'm like they just finished up, I believe their seventh season. And I was like a bit intimidated by it. Like it's a, and also like playing a comic book character, people are going to be mad regardless of how you do it because they have a particular image of what this character is going to be. And some people you're going to fit their image and some people you're not. So there's just this like pressure. 
whenever you're like coming in and taking, you know, a pre pre proposed character. Yeah. Um, but I have to say, I feel so lucky that like Jeff is our showrunner and he's there on set with us every single day because any question I ever have about the DC universe, he'll not only have one answer, he'll be like, well, on earth four, this is the answer on earth nine. This is, where we are, this is the answer. And I'm like, great. Multiple earths. Uh, this is going to take a minute. Um, yeah. But I call, I call Jeff my DC encyclopedia because he has really helped like not only guide me, but like everyone on our show to kind of like understand this universe and kind of what we've gotten into. If there's anyone that understands the DC comics, it's, it's going to be Jeff Johns, isn't it? Because yes. he's he's yeah. written so many of them as well. Yeah, I mean, your introduction was was um, it was a very memorable moment because it's. Uh, I mean, it must have been completely bonkers for you because not only is your character from another another Earth, which if you don't know much about it, it must be like, wait, what? What's what's this? Yeah. <laughs> um, it's also she's like Star Girl is such. Um, She's a very, it's like a very different character in tone, I think, to what we've had in the DC comic, like the, especially the CW stuff up until now. Is, is that, but I also get the sense when I'm watching the show that you really do want to stay true to the comics. And, and is that something that, that you actively seek out when you're filming this and coming up with ideas for what the show is going to be like and when you're acting as, as yeah. well? Yeah. Well, when I first got casted, I immediately, seeked out every single star girl comic I could find. I read a good number of them, even if she had like little cameos, I, I would try mm. to find them just so I kind of understood every aspect of her and something that I really love. And I've wanted to stay true to is her youthfulness. Yeah. Um, you know, out of the JSA, she's, she's one of the youngest. I was like, I don't know if it's her Shazam, or like the real, you know, the young Shazam, who's younger. But regardless, she's she's the baby of the group. Yeah. And I, de I wanted to almost, definitely wanted to stay true to that, but almost like focus in on that, specifically because looking at the Arrowverse, they're none of, like they're all out of high school. They're much older. And this was kind of the first time getting a, to see a CW superhero yeah. balancing being a teenager as well as balancing being a superhero. So that was something that, I found through the comics that I really tried to stick to. Hmm. And that's something about this show that actually I did forget to mention is it is, it, you know, a lot of it is about being a teenager as well, which a lot of these CW DC comic shows don't really, is a lot of the, the characters are older. So, um, and I think that is something that's, that again, is very unique about this show. And also, I mean, do, do you notice that with the fan base as well? Is it, is it something that is like, do you have a wider range of fans in age as well? Yeah, I mean, I don't know the specific demographics of the yeah, other shows. I can only speak to like my experience, and it is an extremely wide demographic. I have yeah. a lot of like my mom's friends reach out, and it's a show every Tuesday. Her friends sit down and watch with their nine-year-old kids. And yeah. then also like my 92-year-old grandma loves the show. Is she a little biased? Maybe, but regardless, she likes it. I'm like nine to ninety two. That's a that's a demographic. Right there. That's a, a very well. I can I can attest that my auntie when I told when I told her that we we're going to get to interview you, she got very excited because oh. she's like, oh my god, I love that show. Uh, she she watches she watches all the she watches all of the CW shows, but uh, she definitely loves uh, Star Girl and she watches it with her two kids as well. So uh, if she's watching this. Uh, <laughs> hi, Lizzie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Is this live? Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, no, we, we, we will put it out. Okay, okay. Uh, min okay. Minimal, minimal edits, though. Hopefully, <laughs> that we like to do minimal edits. Um, so I suppose, like we were talked a little bit about the about starting off, um, being thrown in at the deep end with uh, some of the biggest Arrowverse uh, actors. But what's it like starring in a show alongside actors like you've literally got Joe McHale in there, you've got Luke Wilson as well. So some of these like really recognizable Hollywood talents. What what was what was that like for you? Inspiring, truly. When I first met Luke Wilson, who plays my stepdad on the show. Yeah, your dad. Yeah. Yeah. I was so nervous because like I grew up Legally Blonde was one of my favorite movies. I've been like, <laughs> planning to be Elle Woods for Halloween since I was like eight, but can never like get the perfect outfit. And I also felt like I needed a puppy to hold. But uh, <laughs> when I met him, I was so nervous, but just like both him 
Amy and Joel, I would say are kind of the, you know, the, what's the opposite of word rookie? The word's not coming. Not, not, you know, the, the OG. Yeah. The OG been, yeah. Yeah. The most established on our show. Exactly. Um, and they've all just been so inspiring the way that they balance their work life, but also how they are just as humans. Like Amy is one of, if not the most humble human beings I know, just the way she speaks and listens to everyone. I just, you know, you hear so much about Hollywood, how like these big actors, they're divas and blah, blah, mm. blah, blah, blah. But like these people are better than the average people I, I just meet walking down the street. Um, mm. And then Joel, who I really got to work a lot with this past third season, which hasn't yes. come yet. Um, he's the funniest human being alive. Like every time I had a scene with him, I was like, okay, Brett, get your, your smile <laughs> laughing all day. Um, but also just like, once again, him, you know, he's one of those names you say, and a lot of people are like, oh my gosh, Joel McHale community. I love that show. Yeah. But he walks around and you would never know he was an actor. And I mean that in the best way, just because he's so just humble and yeah. inspiring. Uh, I, I can like follow in their footsteps of humbleness and heart and love. Yeah. I mean, like Joe, uh, yeah, that's community was uh, growing up one of my like favorite shows. So if I, if I was in your in your shoes, which would be amazing, by the way, but um, that would be literal starstruck for me. I would not be able to talk to the guy. And, no, uh, hard work for Luke. This, this is horrible. I had, I would say this is, I didn't know who Joel McHale was. Everyone was like, oh my gosh, Joel McHale. <laughs> and I finally like watched Community because I'm like, if I'm going to work with this guy, like I need to know his work. And he's so yeah. good. But the funny thing is, I knew every other actor on that show. And it's like, Community is Joel's show. But for some reason, I had just never like processed yeah. it. It's got a it's got a very loyal fan base. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that that's the thing about it. But, but he um, deserves that because he's so great. So yeah, I mean, we talked. You mentioned a little bit about um, Stargirl season three, uh, about filming with Joel McCann. Now, I don't want. I'm not going to ask you to spoil anything, but uh, well, if you did, <laughs> uh, very good. But um, small screen readers. <laughs> Small screen readers have been desperate to know when this show is coming out um, because it's I think it's the only CW show to come out this year that still doesn't have a premiere date. Um, now, this is probably very cheeky of me, but could you like, is it coming out this year? I suppose yes. that's the question. I yes, I, I, I feel like that's not too much for me to say that it's definitely going to come out 2022. Um, this is I actually don't know premiere date yet. So I'll just tell you from like my speculation is yeah. we've late summer premiere for the past two seasons. Okay. So I assume we would follow suit to that. But genuinely, I have no idea. <laughs> that that's me being cheeky. That's that that's it. I'm not gonna ask you <laughs> anything <like> else. <laughs> um, but also I wonder um the the um the third season is subtitled Frenemies. Um I was wondering if you could like maybe give a little tease as to why that is yeah well at the very end of season two it like cut out with sportsmaster and tigress and artemis mm. the sportsmaster and tigress being out of jail and artemis all moving next door so they're next door neighbors so you can assume that frenemies would be you know friends enemies yeah. frenemies kind of finding balance of living in the same town and whatever that means and brings. That's very well done. Very, very well done. <laughs> um, I, be a I just said a lot without saying. <laughs> exactly. That's exactly what I was thinking. Uh, <laughs> but uh, so I suppose a, a little bit of a wider question about the DC Comics uh, world. If you, if you do one day, let's say one day in the future, if you could get to play any DC Comics villain, Ooh. which one would it be? Oh my gosh. I mean, the thing is, my answer is going to be very like, that's not realistic, Breck, and whatever. That doesn't that's, matter. That's not the point of this question. The point of this question exactly. is being have fun. And I'm going to yeah. say the Joker. I've loved oh, the Joker wow. okay. since I was younger. I think I was, speaking of Halloween, I was the Joker for Halloween when I was like 12 or 13. Yeah. Um, I just absolutely, and I love all the different versions from like Heath Ledger to like the most, most recent Walking Phoenix, like, you know, after he thought it's like, what do people do after that? And even Jared Leto's interpretation was so unique and quirky and cool and had so many levels. Mm. 
I wouldn't actually ever want to play the Joker because that's like huge shoes to fill. But hypothetically speaking, in a different universe, maybe like Earth 100, exactly. I'll play the Joker. <laughs> <laughs> and um, that's, oh, no, yeah, that's mine. I think it would be the Joker. Or maybe Calendar Man is a, is a really oh. weird DC Comics I'm villain. Not familiar. What about like uh, Human Ghost? That's a that's a real DC villain. That is a real one. Yeah, I'm pretty oh, sure. Yeah. J I'm pretty sure producer James will know more about about that villain than I would because <laughs> he's really into his comics. Calendar Man is that there's um there's a really good graphic novel, Batman graphic novel called The Long Halloween, oh, cool. and there's there's a lot of Calendar Man. Actually, recommendation: if you've been reading um, Star Girl comics, do go and check out uh, The Long Halloween because that's my personal favorite, and I really do think you'd like it. Uh, it's, it's it's a bit of a neo noir thriller type vibe. It's good fun. No, that sounds and, very specific. I love that. <laughs> and um, are there any projects for you in the future beyond Stargirl? Like, what what are you what are you working on next? Yeah, um, I wrapped up on like a thriller. I wouldn't really consider it horror. More like more thriller um mm. movie i wrapped that up before filming season three of star girl so it's been a few months hopefully i'll have a release date for that soon it's called man in the white van um and then i just signed on i don't know if i can say this yet i just <laughs> signed on you know like, oops uh to another film that i'm going to la to start filming this up this upcoming weekend next weekend soon i don't know i don't know where i am what state what country i'm in um, and then I do lots of voiceover. It's something I really, really enjoy. Oh. Um, but I, I, the fun thing about voiceovers is you just get to like go do it for one day and you can film like yeah. three episodes in a day versus like Star Girl, where one episode takes like sometimes 13 sh shoot days to film. Um, so yeah. And you can play like really different characters as well. I, I did a, I did a little bit of voiceover as well, which is why not, it's one of the reasons why I got this great big thing. Yeah, for <laughs> sure. For the voiceover audition. <laughs> I, that's what they want me to have. Like my voiceover agent keeps saying like, so what's your setup again? And I definitely just like use my phone, go, go in the closet. <laughs> Sometimes it's bad and I'll get like, they'll respond to me and be like, okay, so you peaked five times. So we're going to need you to redo this. I'm like, whatever. Yeah. Well, you should uh, invest in a sure mic. They're very good. Uh, uh, no, I said, I said one day. Um, but yeah, that that sounds like really really fun. Um, the Man in the White Van, by the way, is like that would be my wife's like horror movie because she she is terrified of white vans. I um, mean, but actually, it is based on a real serial killer in Florida. Oh. She's not crazy for being scared of men in white vans because there no. was a serial killer who killed who had many of victims, and they believe had many more victims that they just haven't been able to like you know clarify using evidence. Um, so it's based on that. It's based on that true story. And there was a, a young girl who unknowingly escaped this man in the white van and later found out about him and was like, oh, my gosh, that's the man who tried to put me in his van and take me. And I oh ran. Away. So that's that's the story. That sounds brilliant. And it does sound terrifying. Um, it's something that I, I'm definitely going to look out for because it sounds right up my street. I'm a big, like, uh, true crime guy as well. And it sounds... Yeah. Um, is uh, actually question. Last question before you go: uh, Is there anything you're watching at the moment that you think uh, people should check out? Oh goodness, I've been traveling so much. I haven't gotten to turn my TV on. Okay, that's too much. Good. But but before that, I am a huge Shonda Rhimes fan. I love all of her shows. So if you haven't watched Bridgerton yet, really <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I've watched Bridgerton both seasons. Watched it. My, my my wife made me watch them. They're actually second season. I thought was better than the first. Really? See, I think I like the first season slightly better because second season, I can't lie, the girl who ends up with the is it Viscount? Yeah, she doesn't Viscount. annoy me. I'm like, that's supposed to be your sister's girl, and everyone's like, no, but they're in love. I'm like, I don't care. That is so. <laughs> was, honestly, I don't know. I did not like her character. It actually pissed me off. I got very heated about it. It's fine. I'm over it. <laughs> I was the opposite. I, I, I liked her a lot. I, I, she's she's uh, the actress is in Sex Education, and um, yeah, I watched she, her. Is she? In... She's one. She's the, the the three kind of girls that are in Sex Education. That um, oh, is I can't remember that. Season? I think I've only watched the first season thus far. She she is in the first season, but she's mm -hmm. her her role is um she gets a bigger role in the next seasons okay um, i'll have to look yeah. at i mean she's so beautiful and she's very talented like 
she played her character. Like she was a wonderful actress. I mean, I just didn't like her. <laughs> like I her completely get it. I completely get yeah. it. I understand. Uh, it's it's a bit of a it was a bit of a weird twist, but uh, no, it's it's a fun show. And if you haven't watched it, do watch it. Um, mm -hmm. For me, at the moment, I'm as I told you, I'm ma massively into my true crime stuff. So I'm watching a show called The Staircase on HBO, which I do, do recommend. That, wait, Phil, is that what you were talking about? This, oh, my boyfriend, he's asleep over there. He told me this morning that there's a show on HBO Max he wanted to watch, and I think it was The Staircase. Yeah, it's good. It's got Colin Firth and Tony Collette in it. It's a lot of oh, Patrick okay. Schwarzenegger as well is in there. Dane DeHaan. They're all in it. It's great. Oh, Dane DeHaan. I've met <laughs> have you, Did you ever see the movie? Oh, now it's not going to come to me. Is it Valerian? Uh, no, I was thinking Cure for Wellness. I haven't oh, the I Cure for Wellness is really good. It's, it's a super weird movie. It kind of gave yeah. me like shutter island vibes yes yeah. yeah if you haven't seen that watch that it's a it's an interesting movie it is an interesting movie that's a gore gorbavinsky gore movies the guy that did the pirates of the caribbean movies that's i didn't great. know that yeah that actually yeah. correlates like pirates of the caribbean is such a beautiful film film just from like a mm. cinema perspective and i think i feel that way about cure for wellness as well <laughs> <laughs> well on that note thanks guys right. thank bye. you Brett. bye